Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of the Future Tech Podcast. It's me, Charlie Sell, Board Director of Major Group, where I get a chance to talk to thought leaders, senior professionals within the world of technology and STEM, to find out a bit more about their story, their career history. We always cover a topic that's close to their hearts and finish on that all-important career advice to the many young people who listen to the podcast via our STEM Ambassador Association. So I'm really pleased to have Tom Harris with me today. Um, Tom's both a friend as well as um, a highly respected person within the technology world. And he's currently the CTO at ClearBank. And for those who might not know who ClearBank are, they're a global digital bank, um, quite new age and, and doing some really, really quite impressive things within the fintech world. So a man who knows what's going on, it's fair to say. Thank you. So, Tom, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, Charlie, for having me. It's really good to be here. Yeah, and let's jump straight into it. Everyone always is intrigued about the story of the guest. So, so tell us a bit about how you got into technology. Well, yeah, I, it's, uh, it feels like a very long, long time ago now. But um, yeah, so uh, I think my, my passion for technology started at a super, super young age because I two older brothers who had, a, had the games consoles uh, the Spectrum ZX was the beginning of my my journey, and uh, used to get the uh, the code in the magazine to start start writing it's writing your own games. That was how how it started. But um, but actually, like obviously continuing that, um, I, I went I went to university at University of Brighton, and um, after doing both ICT at, uh, college and and school, and. Um, I went there to do computer games development. I, I went there to continue my passion for gaming and 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 uh, kind of really really submerse myself in it. And an amazing amazing course. Learned so much. And uh, games development is actually quite a lot harder <laughs> than than it looks. And trying to trying to map out real world with the real world in in code is is definitely a challenge. Um, Actually, for me, when I when I left university, I looked at the market, and and at that point, back in like nearly two thousand and five, now it was a uh, it was quite a challenging space. The game gaming industry, like mo mobile app games, weren't really a thing yet. Um, it wasn't like wasn't heavily used, and and the sector was quite saturated with people that wanted to be in games development naturally. So. Um, so in, in my first case, I ended up working at a, a small company um, that developed uh, EPOS systems. So, so that was where it all began. And, uh, and they gave me my first sh shot. And, um, and it was actually great because it was a very small company. I got to work with, with all aspects of the business, the, the founder, and we, um, from going out on the road and like installing these systems to write in like bits of software. And that, that and seeing that note actually firsthand gave me like a real sense of entrepreneurship. Like I really like felt like, like actually now I can see how the whole business runs end to end. They all know on a, a small scale, but really great experience. Well, unfortunately that had to come to an end and I found myself finally getting into a more serious development role. And that was a company called uh, Trace One. Uh, and and there I started as a developer and worked my way up uh, ultimately to the head of engineering um, at that company and we developed a SaaS based product and this is this is back in like um, 2000, 2007 2008 and and the concept of SaaS was a, the, the the new the new term a SaaS being uh, software as a service um, and that was a new term in the market. And, and we were providing software to all of the big major supermarkets. It was, and it was suddenly I'm learning about how packaging works, how like how ingredients work on packets. And, and that's like something what's actually, I really love about software is like, I set out to be a games developer. I learned about EPOS systems. Then I learned about like packaging and supply chain management, ultimately going on to work for Just Eat and, and build in building software that, to help people get, get their deliveries and, uh, and, uh, and, and how restaurants operate. And, and, uh, and then, then finally starting um, at Clear, ClearBank and, and learning about the financial sector. And the so being, being in software, it's like you're not limited to any sector. It's like a, you can literally step, step into 
it's always beneficial to know a lot, uh, have a deep understanding of a sector because it makes you more effective as an engineer. Um, but but it's not not essential, right? And so that that's yeah. So that's been my journey. Actually, I did get the fortunate opportunity. Now um, I worked with a team uh, in in about 2019 that built a game for children's BBC uh, called Nightfall. And I got to I got to build this uh, multiplayer game, so I finally ticked my like uh, ambition that the the inner child in me succeeded. Yeah, it's really good. Oh well, and what a story! And yeah, I love the fact that you managed to tick that 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 box of yeah. what got you into into technology in the first place. And yeah. um, and it feels like it's been a yeah, as you mentioned, like quite a fortuitous not fortuitous journey, but you've been willing to take the step into different types of companies. From the very small startup that that founder led business to trace one and then and then obviously just eat and and from, from memory you helped grow that business you're part of the just eat sort of wave weren't you from going from a yeah yeah i definitely weren't like uh the like that the founding group uh no. I, that I wouldn't be working probably if that was the case but um but no i uh part of part of early tech team and um and joined just before we IPO'd and um and actually seeing the company go from uh being being like 30 engineers that built this effectively almost 30 engineers built this platform that got to IPO and then through to to the end to where I left and obviously it continued on growing and merging but there was nearly 400 engineers at the end so the dynamics in in all the different teams I've worked in, I've I've kind of seen like from early stage startups to 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 full fully fledged um, teams and very different like ways of working in the different organisations. And now and now working for a regulated bank, it's yeah again another set of ways of working that you have to adhere to 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 for your regulatory status. It's uh, yeah, yeah, it's been a really interesting journey. And that, I mean, I suppose that leads really nicely into um, a, a topic that I know is close to your heart, which is about that team building, the leadership within teams and what, what yeah. makes effective teams. And as you said yourself, having seen different teams and, 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 and how they've evolved, tell me a bit more from, from your lens, what, what makes a high performing team? What, what, what does it mean to you for, yeah. to, to build a team? I think one of the key things is like making sure um, making sure people are doing what they love as much as doing what you need them to do. So, so, uh, one of the key things that we've, we've done at Clearbank and also just, just eat was something that we introduced as the organization grew was the clear definition between an individual contributor and, and a management role. And, um, for myself, it, that, that, that journey to making that decision, what I would be, was a very difficult decision. I went to management several times, then back to individual contributor, and, and it eventually ended up in, in more managerial role. But um, but yeah, I think like that's that really unlocks because there's a lot of people in technology that really do like just want to write code, really want to get in there. They want to they want to pick up their workloads, and and that's what they're passionate about. They're passionate about the technology. Then there are other people that like they're passionate about the product and the product they're building and and they get great sense of achievement not not by the technology implementation but by the outcome and the deliver the, the benefit to the business so so finding those right people and and, and sorry in the last the last group are the the ones that like are massively get um benefit out of um they they, they really crave the the mentorship they love mentoring people and and growing teams and culture and i think that's a really key point yeah, so so there's the three groups: the 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 sole contributor, the person who loves the product, and the person who goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when you're thinking, and, and as you know, so so many of our listeners may be thinking about how to get into technology, but also about what type of company they should first be joining. Um, what's what's your thoughts? I mean, obviously, your journey was was start up through to yeah. uh, to scale up. Yeah. Do you have advice there? Yeah, uh, I, I can't. Um, I can't recommend enough. Like, and obviously, I will have a bias to my journey and feeling like that's the the right path to take. Right, so definitely listen to more people than just me. Um, but, but I, I honestly believe that um, 
starting your journey in a larger organization, you'll learn loads of great stuff. But what, what you maybe miss is all the interactions with the non-technology people. The bigger the technology to function, the more insulated you are in, in the technology function sometimes. And obviously, that depends on ways of working at that organization. But uh, this, I've always I've just seen this, like uh, the, the bigger technology firms seem to have that. Well, when you're when you're kind of joining a, a startup, uh, maybe a two, three people in technology, um, you you have to wear a few hats to help the startup um, be successful. And I think what that really does for your career development is makes you have more empathy for the for the person at the end of the code you're writing. Like like if you're solving operational things, like that's more empathy for that person who's got to do the operational things. Like you, it, it just it just I, I believe it adds a dynamic to your mindset, which you can't you you have to experience not to you can't teach it directly. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree with you more on that point because it's. It's funny, isn't it? The technology prior to probably, you know, when we started in industry was always perceived as like a cost center to a company yeah. or it was perceived as, as the support of a business. And what's yeah. just been amazing over the last, in my, you know, I think last 10, if not 15 years, is technology is now the profit center. Pro technology is, yeah. is leading yeah. the way. But it, I guess it means engineers do need to be encouraged to be able to speak with the business because actually their their view counts doesn't it yeah yeah and and i think i think that's why it's all about the makeup of your team right you, you need at least to have some people in that team who talk business language and are able to take the technical language and articulate it in the right way and and vice versa and i think that's where going back to them free groups it, it really plays out and when thinking you know, what I really liked was your point about uh, contributors and then people who uh, love products and people who love management. But is there any examples in, from, from your experience or from when you see where personality traits can either be quite damaging to a team or it can be really enhancing to a team, no matter which, you know, yeah. vertical yeah. you're in? Yeah, I think, I think uh, yeah, it's a really good question. Um, I think uh, I think a really strong trait to have is to be pragmatic. Um, and like, I know that sounds quite obvious, but like with technology, you're always making decisions, right? You're, you're, you're always like, while you're writing code, every line of code you're make, writing is a decision. Look, look, and engineers tend to have like this habit of like, if you 50 engineers in a room, there'd be 50 opinions on how that kind of line of code would be, be written. Um, so, so. Uh, that that definitely is like having that pragmatism around well like how passionate should i be about this line of code like is it does it matter that much like when i'm reviewing someone's code does how much does it like is this going to have a material impact on the long term viability of this product or the readability of the code like and just kind of making sure making sure you're not just like over overbearing with your opinions because that that really can kill a team and that can especially for junior members if if someone is very critical of their work um it can really it can really take the wind out of the sails yeah yeah and um, i know another thing like again as i said at the beginning you know knowing you sort of personally and and and, and how you're building the the, the clear bank team diversity is a big thing for you isn't it i know you've yeah. done a really big thing on on helping to sort of balance the gender challenges yeah. what, how have you done that and what's your view on the importance of that yeah so we've done we've done a few things here actually so like um i think like one of the things in technology as well is there's such a demand for it um i think the the age of like requiring a university degree is something else that like in terms of diversity that we we've we've put aside and what and we we judge people based on their merit and the ability to code etc so so boot camps and things like that are a great way to to get into into technology and that's people from all walks of life so um so that's really that's one element yeah and the code first girls or women in tech um we've recently partnered with code first girls is one way but um yeah i think like it's uh, clear banker quite um, passionate about this uh, holistically not just in technology and I think it's really about it starting at the top of the company and and trying to really like really drive it through and regular communications and it, uh, 
and, and kind of in, inclusivity or, and activities, etc. Making sure there's enough opportunities for everyone to do the things they like. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's me. But but yeah, this year we we've specifically gone with Code First Girls, and we're onboarding our first uh, our first cohort of Code First Girls in September, which we're really happy to have. And and uh, in the finance sector and tech, like it like it's, it's it's a particular area where it needs it needs more more proactive um, activity. Yeah, and and you know I, I can. Highly recommend, you know, recommend highly enough go uh, code first girls and these other great sort of organisations that are, you know, they're 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 training people not only that you need to do it from the top down, but actually if we don't encourage more people to enter the yeah. industry from the from the, the funnel, and again the key point of this podcast is to promote STEM to to not just the educate, you know, the uh, yeah. we've gone through that traditional route of university and what have you. Um, and they're great organizations that can help them out there. So it's, yeah. um, yeah, well done to Clearbank and you for, for getting them on board. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, and, and, and we're in a fortunate position to be able to do that as well. Right. So we've, we've had a great success over the last few years and, and that's enabled us to grow our engineering team quite significantly. And as part of that and making sure that was part of the strategy was very key. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And we have zoomed through the podcast as always when there's such interesting conversations. And so the last part is always that one or two bits of career advice. So what what can you offer our listeners, you know, to, to be able to stand out or get that foot in the door and they're wanting to yeah. get their their starting point in tech? Oh, it's a really that's a really tough one. Um yeah. I think I think uh the best thing I could say is is um for the technology is important, but it's not the most important thing about being a good developer, like demonstrating your ability to understand problems outside the technology and, and demonstrate your ability to be a good team player, uh, very much what I would say it makes, it makes, will make you a better engineer. The tech, the technology part, um, it's not easy, but it's definitely the easier bit to find people with them skills. Like, being that well-rounded character is it it, it, w- it will go a lot further than being able to write perfect code every time. Yeah, fantastic. And that team player, um, and, and as you said earlier, being pragmatic, yeah. you know, just just wanting to contribute and learning how to speak to the business, speak to dip people outside of your departments, I guess. And that's yeah, that's got both, both up and down the, the the hierarchy as well. Have the have the confidence to yeah, to yeah, approach that's, people. That's a really... Yeah, I think though actually the bit of advice I got um, very early from um, uh, someone called Benny Johnson um, from, from Just Eat was ask for forgiveness, not permission. I'm not sure <laughs> I always agree with that uh, statement, uh, especially in a regulated bank. But uh, but at the same time, I do think um, I do think that has uh, stood me well in in terms of um, definitely like striving striving like expecting expecting some level of forgiveness for for anything you do and 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 therefore you have a bigger positive impact yeah yeah well what a brilliant way to finish your podcast so tom thank you so much for for sparing your time and to be on our show today thank you very much and to to our listeners that's another episode of the future take podcast um, the podcast is on the Arrows Group forward slash podcast webpage and also shared on the STEM Ambassadors Association. Um, so for now, it's uh, another episode. Thanks to everyone listening. And thank you to Tom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.